having said all that, I'm going to come through and start doing them this way. Once it gets down to that little collar, that little pedestal, the grain tends to run this way. They're really unique structures, really amazing formations actually. Very interesting. And I'm just going to let those kind of dissipate as it goes down into the sand. Eventually they get overtaken by the sand and they just kind of even out into the ground and become connected. All right, it's looking pretty good, I think. I'm going to lighten that up just a whisker. I'm going to take a little more white and this time a little bit of the yellow ochre. Maybe just a touch of that previous sienna color. Now I could go very orangey on this. I could use some of my cad red light if I had that on the palette. Sometimes I go really bright with it with that tone, which is a very light, bright orange. I think today I'm going to leave it a little more subdued. I tell my students all the time, every time you paint, you're going to paint differently. Um, you, whatever's in you at that given moment when you've got that brush in your hand is what's going to come out of you. Right now I'm thinking that this is probably going to satisfy me for today, but don't be afraid to play with your colors. That's what it's all about. Get some color out and try different things. Um, nobody can tell you that your way is wrong. You do it your way and what makes you happy. That's what painting is all about, is self-expression. It's not expression of somebody else. You only have to account for yourself. I'll put a little extra highlight. See how that extra highlight just kind of brings that out a little more? That's looking pretty good, I think. Now, don't you think you could do this? I think you can. It's not that difficult. Um, it takes a little practice. Like I said, you're probably going to want a photo to look at of something, no matter what your subject is. Okay, that's looking pretty decent. This is actually a, a formation in Monument Valley, what I'm doing here. I guess I forgot to mention that. Um, it's actual rock formation. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to take my fan brush. I'm going to rinse it out. I've got just uh, paint thinner in this pail. Rinse that right out. I'm going to take something a little darker. I'll use Van Dyke Brown. And I'm just going to mix it into the stuff that's already on my palette. You'll see a lot of times I just incorporate one color into the next. That gives you a better chance of having color harmony rather than all these disjointed colors that aren't related. They all kind of mix together and become harmonious with each other. Now I've thinned this down with paint thinner with the intentions of taking my fan brush like this and if I snap the bristles like that you get these little dots. This is called spattering which gives you a lot of gravelly, gritty texture for roads and paths. and A very useful technique to know. Sometimes I use it for falling snow in a snow scene, or you can use it for gravel on a road, like I said, or stars in a nighttime sky. When I'm doing the gravel texture like that, I don't really just leave it. I smear it a little bit which means I'm going to take my fan brush now. now. If you don't want to get your finger dirty, you can actually use the knife. I just usually use my finger. Some people prefer to flick it with the knife. It keeps their fingers out of the paint. But I'm a firm believer that painting isn't fun unless you get some on you once in a while. So I'm not afraid of it. I'm going to wipe this off and I'm not going to use the end like you normally would a fan brush. This is very coarse if I do it this way. But if I use the back side of the brush, I get a much lighter touch. And I just want to smear that a little bit. So it doesn't look like just hard dots, but it looks like little divots and depressions in the sand. And it looks more realistic rather than just little dots on there. See how that softens it somewhat? Now it looks like there's texture in it. Speaking of texture, I'm going to go back with my one inch texture brush. And these are a little more coarse than the uh, scenery brushes. And they're made for texture. That's why I named them a texture brush. I'm going to take some burnt sienna, maybe just a touch of purple, but a fair amount of texture on the brush, as, uh, on the palette. See, I'm using enough paint to actually get texture on the brush. And the, Don't match your brush bristles together. Leave them nice and open. If I come in, I can kind of get this rough growth and sagebrushy looking stuff. 
Um, since this is the foreground, we can afford to be darker and uh, more defined, so don't be afraid to make it stand out three-dimensionally but by putting more texture in it. So I'm using quite a bit of paint. If you look at this area back here, it's very smooth and blended. It's no texture in it at all. I want texture in this stubbly, grassy-looking stuff. And see, basically, this whole painting is just uh, kind of the orange and blue and the brown. Speaking of the orange, I'm going to wipe that off. And I'm going to take a little bit of straight sienna. Load the brush the same way. Quite a bit of paint. And I'm going to put some of that orangey texture in here as well. Just let it, let it fade away in the background so there's just very little out there. I'm not going to put a lot. I want that to look distant. See how that kind of brings that much closer with all this foreground texture. All right. I know for a fact if it was a nice clear day like that, there's going to be a buzzard or two on the wing out there somewhere. So I'm going to take my number two script liner. And I'm just, again, I'm just going to take some of the dark stuff that's already on my palette, some of this brown and purple mixture. And I'm really thin that down with paint thinner, and I'm going to roll that to a point. And this is our focal area. If you walked into the room and had not seen this painting before, and your eye went to that painting, you're kind of drawn right there. It's because that's the largest thing, it's the darkest thing against the lightest background. There's the most contrast to that light sky with that dark view. So I wouldn't want to put my bird way over here or way over here. I want him kind of in the vicinity of where my focal point is. So I'm going to say there's a bird there, maybe one here. Notice I'm making them different sizes. The smaller one looks farther away. If I wanted to say there's one kind of coming up closer to us, I could afford to make him bigger. Maybe, maybe I'll balance him out and put him over here. See, if I make this one bigger yet, he looks even closer than that one. So you get a sense of scale and distance on it. All right, I think that's a wrap. You, did you like that project? Don't be afraid to try this out. Try these signature paints and brushes. You'll see that they're going to work for you. It just takes a little bit of practice. Watch a few of the free art lessons, and uh, don't be afraid to give it a whirl. And check out wilsonvickford.com for my schedule and more free lessons. Take care until next time.